Hey everyone, Dana here. What? I have to make sure I put it the right way. What is in this little package in Germany and why is it different or special? American viewers, you might be surprised to find out what this is. I will tell you all that and more in this video because today I am back, back again with more teeny tiny weird random Germany versus USA differences so obscure that you probably never noticed them before, but now that I point them out to you, you'll notice them all over the place. In my last Germany versus USA video like this, we talked about the spines of books being different. So America, Germany, America, Germany. For more on that, check out this video here. But speaking of books, the holidays are just around the corner. And if you would like to get a gift for a German speaker in your life, a native German speaker, or someone like me who has learned German as a foreign language, then I super duper recommend giving them the gift of laughter this year with my book, You Go Me on the Cookie. You Go Me on the Cookie, comes from the German saying, Du gehst mir auf den Keks, and it is a fun, funny book. So it's a really great gift for your German-speaking friends and family, and also for those acquaintances in your life that you're like, I wanna get this person a gift, but I don't know what to get them. Do they speak German? If so, problem solved, give them you go me on the cookie. But don't take my word for it. Here is a quote from one of your reviews of You Go Me on the Cookie. Habe das Buch soeben ausgelesen und kann es von vorne bis hinten weiterempfehlen. Es ist nie langweilig. Es ist witzig und macht Spaß beim Lesen. Ich wusste, dass unsere Sprache nicht leicht ist, aber über so viele Wörter habe ich noch nie nachgedacht. Ein tolles Buch, gerade für Muttersprachler. Auf äußerst humorvolle Art werden uns hier die Widersprüchlichkeiten, Ungereimtheiten, zig Ausnahmen von der Ausnahme und viele Besonderheiten unserer Sprache aufgezeigt. Schon auf den ersten Seiten musste ich herzhaft lachen. Links and more information about where you can get a copy of You Go Me On The Cookie down in the description box below. And for more of your reviews in a funny way by Mr. German Man, check out this video here. Outlets, it's not what you think. Okay, so the obvious outlet difference here is how they look and the voltage amount. But that's not what I'm talking about in the video today. This video is not about the obvious things that everybody notices, Germany versus USA, instead, I'm talking about the fact that in Germany, I have noticed that it is often much harder to stick the plug in and pull the plug out of the outlet. Unfortunately, the last time that I was back in the US in 2018, it did not occur to me to film myself plugging and unplugging something in an American outlet. So I do not have that footage to show you, but I can tell you from years of living in the US and doing it that it's often quite easy. You often just, put the plug in and pull the plug out of the outlet without very much effort. Is this something that you have noticed as well? Am, am I the only one who has noticed this? Please let me know in the comments. And also, how is it in other countries? Barn color. Growing up in the US, for me, the color of barns is... American viewers, pause the video here and write in the comments, what is the color of barns? Five, four, three, two, one, red. In America, the color of barns is red. This is why in the US there is even the color barn red. Like that's a color, barn red. And it's a, it's a thing, barns are red. <laughs> that's just what I grew up learning, barns are red. That's the color of barns. <laughs> that's just how, how the world works. Guess what? Not in Germany. In Germany, barns are not red. They are wood colored. I think as far as I've been able to determine, there doesn't really seem to be like one particular barn color. Like this is the color of barns in Germany. For a while, I thought that barns in Germany were brown. Like I thought that that was the color 
of barns in Germany, but now I'm not so sure. I think I've also seen green ones. So what would you say? Is there a specific color for barns in Germany? Let me know in the comments. I can't tell you what the next one is about because it would ruin the surprise. American viewers, I've got another question for you, okay? Let me know down in the comments, what do you guess is in this little packet here. You saw it at the beginning of the video. What do you think is in here? I'll give you a hint. It is used for cooking. So what could this be? What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna tell you now. Drum roll, please. It is baking powder. This is baking powder. Isn't it so cute? So tiny and cute and adorable. Okay, so the difference here is that while you can find baking powder in a bit larger containers here in Germany, I have never seen these small little packets of baking powder sold in the US. I have always seen baking powder in the US come in larger containers like this, for example. And to me, this, this little packet here, this looks to me how yeast is sold in the US, which is exactly what I thought these were when I first moved to Germany and I first saw these little packets in the store. I thought that they were yeast. Yeast is also sold in similar little packets here in Germany. This is what yeast looks like to me in the US. Like this is, a, for me, a typical yeast package in the US. So yeah, this is yeast in Germany. This is baking powder. And um, yeah, they look pretty similar to me. Also watch out because the baking powder in Germany is usually single acting while baking powder in the US is usually double acting. So there is a difference there that many people don't realize. Inline skating. For one, I would say that overall inline skating is still way more popular here in Germany than in the US. I feel like inline skating was pretty big in the US in the 90s. I don't know if there was also a similar big peak in inline skating here in Germany in the 90s too, but while I guess it's, it's not really super popular here in Germany nowadays, I would still say it is more popular here among adults than in the US. I mean, until just a couple years ago, there was blade night here in Munich once a week during the summer where they would shut down parts of the streets and huge crowds of people would go skating around the city together. But the main thing that I want to mention here in this video is that in Germany, when I do see adults out skating around in the city, I often see them wearing full protective gear. So I'm talking here helmet, knee pads, elbow pads, wrist hand pads, which is awesome. Love the safety, two thumbs up, love it. Back in the US, whenever I did see adults now and then inline skating, at least outside of the 90s, I don't think that I really ever saw them wearing protective gear. Maybe a helmet, sports, and restaurants. In the US, you have restaurants, and you also have places where you can go do sports, like for example, bowling alleys or indoor rock climbing. At bowling alleys in the US, there is usually a little restaurant area where you can get food. Typically food like pizza, hot dogs, french fries, and typically you order the food up at the counter and then you bring it to your table near your bowling lane and you eat while you bowl. But that's just the thing. People usually only eat there while they are bowling. Like it's not a thing to just go to dinner at the bowling alley restaurant when you're not bowling. And the food is generally nothing phenomenal, yeah? Like, like it's food that I really liked as a kid when we went to the bowling alley for a kid's birthday party or something like that. But you're generally not going there for the food. You're going there to bowl or do whatever other sports and you just eat it because you're hungry and it's there, yeah? Here in Germany, I have noticed that at some sports places, like for example, some bowling alleys, squash courts, sometimes there are genuinely delicious 
restaurants. And not like you eat while you play squash kind of thing. No, there is sometimes a separate restaurant area with nice tables and servers and really tasty food. Sometimes people even go there just to eat even if they are not doing the sports that are offered at that place. It's just a good restaurant to go to after work or on the weekend or during lunch or whatever. It's, it's just a good restaurant. Apple juice. Before moving to Germany, for me, apple juice was a kid's drink. It was not really something that most adults regularly consumed. And especially for younger kids in the U.S., apple juice was often diluted with water. So it was often like half water and half apple juice. In Germany, apple juice is a totally, totally, totally normal and common drink for adults. Not only that, they often dilute it with water. Bubbly water, but still water nonetheless. Bubbly water apple juice, apfelschorle, is a really common and totally normal drink for adults to order at restaurants and drink at home here in Germany. While in the US, apple juice is often considered a part of the kids menu in restaurants. And unless a friend of mine in the US had kids, I would not guess that they had apple juice in their fridge. But if they did have kids, then I would guess that they had apple juice. Because yeah, for me, apple juice was like a typical kid's drink. So my question for you is, have you also noticed these things? What are your thoughts on them or your experiences with them? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. For more content from me, you can follow me over on my Instagram at wantedadventure. My Instagram stories are usually in German and I usually make little English subtitles for them. And a really, really, really big thank you so much to our patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you so, so, so much for your support. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen.